After 12 years in OMAD, I can say that I feel great both physically and mentally despite my age. How is it possible? Are we able to adapt to what some call an extreme regimen and still benefit from it? In this video, I show you why I believe that we as a species are better adapted to time-restricted feeding. So if you want to change your life, stick around. You don't want to miss anything. We have at least two biologic adaptations in our bodies to time-restricted feeding. I have learned about them in my research in the scientific literature. What I found made me conclude that we are not meant to eat several times a day at all. These adaptations are the ketones and the BDNF. In fact, they explain why I am more mentally and physically fit than ever before in my life. I am about to explain why. But before I do that, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and give a like to this video. Don't forget to click on the bell so you get notified of my videos to come. Humans evolved over a few million years with all but one of the branches becoming extinct. Our first step seems to have been bipedalism. But our most remarkable adaptation is our large brain. Perhaps not casually, we produce a protein called BDNF, or brain-derived neurotrophic factor. BDNF promotes the formation of new neurons from stem cells, or neurogenesis. It also promotes the formation of new synapses, or synaptogenesis. Synapses facilitate the communication between neurons and between neurons and other organs such as muscles, and glands. BDNF has beneficial effects on cognition, mood, cardiovascular function, and even on our energy metabolism. It would be fitting to conclude that BDNF contributed to our evolution making us more adaptable to our life as hunter-gatherers. Imagine how our ancestors had to procure food through hunting, running, or ambushing their prey while being hungry. Clearly, a system that would have favored both our physical and mental performances on an empty stomach would have assured our survival. Well, yes, BDNF would have encouraged and support our brain, growth, and function but also encouraged the use of glucose and fat energy when we needed them the most. BDNF involvement in glucose metabolism includes 1. An increase in insulin production by the beta cells in the islets of Langerhans and the pancreas. This action should increase glucose uptake and its use for energy by cells throughout the body. 2. A decrease in glucose production in liver cells presumably to tone down the availability of glucose for energy. 3. An increase in insulin sensitivity and skeletal muscle, further increasing glucose uptake and energy. This would make sure that we use all the available energy. 4. A switch of the white fat to the brown fat phenotype. In essence switching from energy storage to energy usage. How do I know that BDNF is an evolutionary adaptation to our hunter-gatherer past? Well, it is precisely exercise and fasting what triggers BDNF. Add to that the roles of growth hormone and ketones during fasting and the circle is complete. Insulin is secreted when we eat. Growth hormone is secreted in the absence of insulin. Growth hormone promotes the mobilization of fat for energy through the formation of ketones, but it also protects the muscles against breakdown. Ketones, thus generated, are a more efficient source of energy for the brain, the heart, the muscles, and the gut. Insulin also assured our survival by storing surplus energy in our body fat for future use. But insulin stores energy from dietary glucose, and that was rare in our primitive times. In our long evolutionary story, only relatively recently, since antiquity, we began to use agriculture as an assured and continuous source of food. With the advent of civilization, we had to feed more and more people. Not surprisingly, we invented bread as the staple to feed the masses. We left behind the lifestyle we had been adapted to. Then we began to eat mostly carbohydrates. Interestingly, Romans ate only one meal a day in the middle of the day, a custom carried through in the Middle Ages. 
breakfast was only introduced in the 17th century. Later, during the Industrial Revolution, breakfast became common, especially among workers. Dinner became a family gathering event, while lunch was a quick snack, at least in the English-speaking cultures. Eating three meals a day, as you see, is a relatively new custom. Now, we have a constant stimulation of insulin. This has not turned out too well for humans, whether poor or rich. Clearly, we do not need three meals to survive. But what we have learned is that an elevated insulin can be deleterious to our bodies. Multiple meals in a day and diets rich in carbs may maintain our insulin high. This simply does not fit our hunter-gatherer past to which we are adapted. It is easy to see how a hunter-gatherer would engorge with sugar-rich foods occasionally found, like honey, or seasonal fruits. We are adapted to store this occasionally found energy in our body fat. Then we could extract the fat when needed to produce ketones. It is no wonder that our 20th century lifestyle, the couch potato lifestyle, is so deleterious. We are simply not adapted to it. It may take millennia to adapt to it, but in the meantime, we suffer from obesity, diabetes, and poor performance in the gym and at the desk. In fact, the lack of exercise and overeating can result in reduced BDNF signaling. The consequences may be the development of the metabolic syndrome and obesity, and susceptibility to Alzheimer's and Parkinson's diseases. On the other hand, anxiety and depression may be contained by BDNF, provided we fast, exercise or both. I for one changed my life by tapping into our ancestral adaptation to the OMAD regimen, leaving the couch potato lifestyle behind. One meal a day should not be feared but embraced as what we evolved to do. The result will be better health and performance at any age. I have every reason to believe that life expectancy and quality of life will improve in the years ahead provided that we accept OMAD as the standard lifestyle. Yes, I believe that for you, for me, and for humanity in the years ahead, life is looking up. Thank you.